that that a lot of prayers are in for for my practice. And I remember having to do it in front of you. And then afterwards opening my eyes and go, I just had to sing in front of Selena Gomez. That's right. <laughs> and I, I actually thought, do remember that. Do you that. remember how bad it was? Yes. <laughs> you were like, I don't know if I should sing in front of you. I was <laughs> like, please. I thought it was beautiful. No, I we're... thought it was amazing. And also just to say the food was incredible. I remember that more than anything. <laughs> I love that. Well, I wanted to start off by just saying to you that I truly believe that this documentary is so special, genuinely. Thank you. It is, it's powerful, it's inspiring, and it's the work that we so deeply need right now. Mm. And your voice in the conversation, the global conversation around well being mm -hmm. and mental health is the most powerful voice there is. It really is. Thank you. And so when you put out a piece like this and you let us in, it only strengthens the conversation across the world. And that's something that you're doing. So I want to just Thank start you. off by saying that from the bottom of my heart, I'm so grateful to you. Thank you for saying that. I think that is a huge part of why I decided to release it after having an internal battle. I mean, daily at, at one point, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I shouldn't release it. And this is too honest. This is too much of myself until I realized that ultimately it was meant for something bigger. It wasn't just about me. It was about other people. And it took a life of its own and became what it is now, which I'm still nervous about. I'm still anxious about. But I think releasing it is a huge healing, um, a healing process for me. And it's me letting go of that version of myself. Wow. Yeah. That's so powerful to hear that. I mean, when I hear you say that, that I feel like you're one of these people that you serve in order to heal and you give in order to let go. Mm -hmm. And that's such a beautiful cycle because I think often we think when we're going through things that the more insular we go, right? but you're someone who opens up yeah. and says, here it is. I think, you know, being... In moments in my life, whether it was my health or personal life, friendships, relationships, I feel like giving myself completely to something is just the best way I can love. But I never wanted the pain that I endured to put some sort of guard on myself, an armor, if you will. And I never, I never let that happen because I still believe and I still hope. I hope for love and I hope for healing and I hope for change. And I never want to lose that. Of course, there are days where I feel so far away, but I would rather continue to get my heart broken than to not feel at all. That's the greatest sign of strength. Yeah. I mean, that is such a powerful statement. And I think with a statement like that, you're encouraging so many people to feel heard. I mean, yeah. I think most of us feel far away from those things. Right. And we're scared to admit that. I mean, you start the documentary with the promise of, I'm going to share my darkest secrets. Yeah. And when I heard that, I thought, wow, like, I was thinking, Selena, what was, why is it that when we share our dark, what happens when we share our darkest secrets? Not just for you, but for any of us, when you're with your friends, when you're with your families, like, what, what does that do? I think at first it's frightening, but I feel like, if you surround yourself with people who support you and love you, you have to be careful with who you share your story with. Mm. I think that can be dangerous. Sharing something that maybe was really hurtful or sharing a story about your internal struggles to someone who may not be giving you the right advice or um, guiding you another way that will only lead you to more pain is scary. So first and foremost, I would say, making sure you surround yourself with great people. And then I would say, learn everything there is to learn once it's out. Once you say, okay, I'm dealing with depression, then find out every single thing you can about what that means. And when you have a relationship with depression, as opposed to, you know, allowing it to keep sinking and in, in, inside of you, it's, it's a little bit more freeing, mm. I think, to understand yourself better. I want to know what triggers me. I want to know why I get depressed and start asking yourself questions to open up yourself instead of, you know, it's easier said than done, though, I should say. But instead of, you know, keeping it in, I find that the biggest reward is letting it go. 
Yeah, I I think there's that statement in the documentary that says, you said your mom would always say, uh, if you're afraid of something, learn more about it, mm -hmm. and then your fear will go away or something yeah. according to those. She definitely did that when I was younger. I lived in Texas, and we were huge with... Um, the tornado scene, that was what was happening. And I was terrified. So I would bring like a cross and I'd bring like a big pillow and I'd lay in my bathtub because that's what I Googled is supposedly oh. going to help. And my mom would just kind of smile at me. And she, the next day, I remember she got me a bunch of books and it was all about thunderstorms and different clouds and formations and all this stuff. And she just, she just told me, she's like, it's not that scary, you know, it's especially when you know that it's just a part of the world. And mm. I, I guess they are still scary, but now I understand what happens and yeah. But I love sweet. how you're applying that to depression. You're applying yes. that to different things in your life. I completely agree with, I mean, my favorite thing um, uh, that I say in the documentary is that I, I have bipolar. I just, I learn how to live with it and I just have made it my friend because that's truly what it can be to me now. Yeah. And tell us about that process of when you first discover something like that, like you said, it's easier said than done. The voices are so loud. Mm -hmm. There's so much inner judgment. Yeah. You know, our inner critic is so painful to Definitely. live with. And now when you're saying, oh, I'm trying to work on making it a friend, which is a beautiful transition. Tell us a bit about that journey of inner critic to inner friend? Well, to be honest, I've been to four treatment centers and I have a lot of opinions on, you know, rehabs, if you will, or, you know, places to go. There's a lot that I don't agree with, but um, what I will say is throughout all of it, learning lessons through dialectical behavior therapy or um, cognitive behavioral therapy, there's something that's always been embedded in me throughout all of those different moments in my life. And that was always to recognize when something was happening to me, accepting it. And I think once I realized that this was something that wasn't going to go away, this wasn't something that was going to be fixed by going to these places. Mm. It was more so what can I know about myself? Okay, if I if I kind of go down this road, I'm going to get triggered and I know that feeling and I know how to avoid it. However, I go to therapy. I also have, you know, medication that I fully am on that I believe in full heartedly and it helps me stay balanced. But I still have to deal with it. You know, I still have days that are pretty low and moments that I'm just too over the top. And I'm like, I want to buy everyone a house and <laughs> I want to save the world. Um, but I just, I've learned to kind of understand it. And the best part about that is also my family and friends learning how to live with it too. They can be great friends to me in that way. And yeah. that took a lot of time as well. Yeah, no, these are such, you know, I, I know that you do so much work in this space, but today when I'm hearing you share all these insights and they genuinely are insights, they're so powerful because even you just saying like, I had to realize that I don't have to fix it mm -hmm. or that it's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. Like these things make difficult things livable with. Right. Uh, and when we look at the seasons or we look at the weather, it's like, you know, it's going to rain one day and you know, it's going to be dark one day and you know, it's going to be sunny another day. And when you know that, you stop trying to fight it and change right. it. Yeah. You can accept it, which it sounds what from what I'm hearing from you. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's taken me a long time. It's um that's not six years, that's probably ten years mm. in reality. But it it really it's really been interesting and I feel better and I feel great now that I can talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. The thing you keep mentioning today is letting go. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us are trying to know how to let go of old selves, old parts of ourselves, or, or parts that don't serve us anymore. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I, when I lived as a monk, some of the areas that we'd live in, there were often we'd come across a lot of snake skin. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'd always use snakes as an analogy of how 
Mm. We leave behind. So snakes don't break out. They don't rip their skin off. They slither out. Right. And their skin just kind of like falls away. Yes. And then we would naturally not find snakes, thankfully, and find yes. snake skin. But that analogy always like really resonated with me. The idea that when we're shedding, when we're letting go, mm. it's not a aggressive process. Right. How did you learn to become compassionate and calmer with yourself because at first we can really feel like we're trying to break something off. Yeah. I think I, I tend to blame myself when mm. I can't let something go. I feel maybe something is my fault or I should have done more of this or less of that. And it starts to become, you know, just like a really, it, I, I kind of turn sad. Uh, one thing I've noticed when I watched the documentary back for the first time, I didn't even recognize that girl anymore. And it broke my heart because I was talking about my body and my image and, and I just hate that I ever felt those feelings. And I think because I have a younger sister, there's been this huge responsibility given to me in a way that has helped me. And I say this about my fans as well, or or people that have, you know, grown with me. I've almost had to get back up every time, more so for them than myself. And that's something I've learned to really understand. It's it's healthy to want to be strong for other people, but I needed to recognize I needed to be strong for myself. And that took a while and it took things like making myself uncomfortable and changing my um, my thought process, changing the things I watch on TV, changing the music I'm listening to, little things that I can adjust that will perhaps change my mood or make me feel better instead of worse, you know? Mm, it is some of these small things, isn't it? Yeah. It, oh my gosh, I love scary movies, but I can't watch <laughs> them all the time. I'm like happy and I'm like, guys, let's watch a scary movie. Everyone's like, why? Why on earth do you want to do that right now? And you're kind of like, yeah, you're right. Do they manage to persuade you? Yeah, yeah. most of the time. Yeah. But it was Halloween, so I got my way for, for a few weeks. You did? Yeah. <laughs> what did you end up watching? Oh, we watched Halloween. We watched um, Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street. Which one ruins your mood uh, the worst? Like, which one makes oh, it Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Probably, like, hereditary, something really dark. Yeah. But it was it was fun. It was Halloween. We were yeah. just celebrating. Yeah. No, there's, I always call it cliffhanger chemicals. Oh, yeah. Like, I feel like when we watch things that put us into states of anxiety oh, yeah. or stress, mm -hmm. we release all these cliffhanger chemicals totally. and now you're like, well, why can't I sleep? Yep, like, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Why yeah. am I having bad dreams? Yeah. Radhi's like that. So my wife's like that. She, yeah. she can't, I have to, she always gets really excited to watch things like that yeah. too. I'm like, Radhi, we can't do this because you will not <laughs> let me sleep for oh, the rest of the night. That's so, so funny. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's really beautiful to hear you say there's these little changes because I think that's what people feel hardest to change. Mm -hmm. And I think when I watch the documentary, the, the greatest challenge you really empathize with is having to do this when every time you're in a car and then every time you get out of the car, there's cameras, there's people, right. there's opinions, there's, you know, that's something very few people can relate to. Mm -hmm. But I think what's so brilliant about the, how the documentary is made is mm -hmm. that you really feel like we're living that with you. Yeah. And so you're like, wow, like, even though I can't relate to what Selena's going through, I can understand how it must be really challenging yeah. and really stressful. And so what's it like having to deal with all of this that all of us are dealing with too, but you're dealing with it with an added layer of, you know, exposure? Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I don't know any different. Yeah. That's what's really scary. Sometimes I think that's really sad. And other times I just think, well, this is what I've been given and this is the path that I, I want to continue to walk in. And I know any moment I can, you know, quit and walk away. And, you know, that's just not really how I was raised to be. So maybe if it had happened to me later in life, I would have had a different outcome but because I was raised in it, I, I really had to learn the hard way on how to deal with it, on how to not give, if you will, that clickbait that people want. Mm. And I mean, I, I think I do, my, I do my best to try and eliminate these negative stories or this 
or il- or other people illustrating my journey. It just, I interrupt them with my truth and that's what I will always continue to do. And that's what this documentary does as well. It's, it's going, it's going to be me taking control of my story and no one can change that or say any different. I, I actually, I'm so glad you addressed that because I've always found that with you, that you always, 